blessings to you on this day. Wherever you are in the world, we give God thanks and praise that you are joining us in worship. I invite you to take a deep breath in. Breathe in deeply. Let it go. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in life and hope and joy and exhale anything that is hindering you from being present. Finally, take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in and hold it, hold it, hold it. Sigh it out through your mouth. Wherever you are, I pray in this moment that you might experience the joy of God, the peace of God, the love of God. May these gifts be as near to you as your next breath. Join me now in prayer. Oh God, we give thanks for this time of worship. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being faithful, for being just, for being God all by yourself. Besides you, O oh Lord, we know there is no other. From the rising of the sun until its setting, you are worthy of praise. And we do just that, O oh God. We praise your name for your goodness and mercy shown towards us, for granting us reasonable portions of health and strength, for being a shelter in a time of trouble, for being a friend when we found ourselves friendless, for being all that we need and then some. O oh God, we are grateful. We gather on this day celebrating, celebrating how you've brought us from a mighty long ways. We gather as those who perhaps also find ourselves fighting back tears or fears. Lord, wherever we are, whatever we're going through, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you might visit us anew, that you might remind us right now that we are never alone but that you, O oh God, are always near to us. We pray that as the scriptures are read, as words are lifted, proclaimed in your name in both song and sermon, that you might grant us the ability to see you anew, that we might be inspired. Speak to our hearts, O oh Lord. We need to hear a word from you. We pray that you might bless and keep us in the strong name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Again, welcome home to Downs Memorial United Methodist Church. You belong here and are being invited to sit, to be at ease in the presence of the one who liberates you and I to new life. I pray that as we continue our journey through this Easter season, that you might be on the lookout for the ways in which God is bringing forth new life all around you. We're so grateful that you're joining us in worship on this day. We give glory and honor and praise unto our God. Worship 
find adore you we bow ourselves before you giving you the glory that is to your name we magnify your name glorify your name oh god we magnify your name glorify what I do. Praise is what I do. Ooh, is what I do. We magnify your name. Glorify your name, O oh God. Would you join me now in prayer? Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. And Easter is this 50-day season marking the new life found in Christ and the ways we are invited to live into this reality. During this season, we explore how listening, believing, and following intersect to chart a way that empowers us to embody the gospel message. Easter is more than a day or a moment in time. Easter is a lifestyle. Easter is an orientation. Can I get a witness? Easter offers us an important revelation. Death does not have the final word. How about another witness, somebody? Death does not have the final word. Easter is proof that God can take wounds and do something wonderful. Speaking of working wonders, today is a special day for another reason. In addition to continuing our journey through the Gospel of John, focusing on the voice of Jesus, today is also a day that I join many in raising my voice to celebrate mothers. Today is Mother's Day. Now, as I begin, I would also like to acknowledge that today, like all holidays, is a complicated day. I acknowledge that this day may be particularly challenging for those who have strained relationships with their mother, mothers, or other mothering figures. I acknowledge that there are many whose experience of mother or mothering presences has been more painful than joyful. I acknowledge that there are those both among us and beyond us who long to be mothers, but for many reasons are unable. I acknowledge that today, this day may be more painful for some than others. Perhaps there are mothers who will not hear from their children or mothers whose children are no longer around either because of willful social distancing or perhaps their children have died, have lost their lives, as well as those who have lost their lives to other circumstances. We're invited to grapple with serious questions. How do we make space for those whose mothers are present in body, but perhaps because of an illness or some other circumstance are absent in mind or vice versa? Perhaps there's something else at play that hasn't been named. You know what it is, and at this moment, I invite you to hold that truth in both your heart and mind. I acknowledge 
that today is a day in which hurting hearts might feel extra tender. And on this day, I seek to remind you that you are seen. Your feelings matter. And I pray that you might find strength in the resolute hope of the promises and the presence of God made known through all of the experiences that have been a source of life for you. Even as today may be complicated, today is also a beautiful day, in which we're invited to seek the faith, the hope, and the love of God. And so with that said, I also acknowledge the gift of this day, the gift of those mothers and mothering presences who represent the very best of who we are and of who, whether biological or not, are a wellspring of life and love for us all. I must confess that at this very moment, I'm thinking about my own mother, my own mama, and the ways that her life is a living testament to the love of God for me. I'm thinking about her witness, her faith, her strength, her determination, her care and compassion. I do not take it for granted that I am among those very few who are privileged to be a beneficiary of love and concern that has liberated me to life. I've got two other siblings who share in that joy. I could spend all day telling you about how awesome my mama is. Your awesome mama. Oh yes, shout out to you. Instead, instead of sitting here and talking about how amazing my mom is, I will invite you too, like me, to pause and reflect on your mother, mothers, and mothering figures in your life. Name them aloud. Go ahead right now, type them in the chat. Text them to your family and friends, their names. And as you do so, I too will say that on this day and in this moment, I give thanks to God for my mother. Also, I acknowledge my grandmothers, aunts, great aunts, cousins, friends, and so many more who have been mothering figures, presences in my own life, in your lives. So for all the mothers and mothering presences in our world, those who embody the best of our hopes and dreams, thank you for being who you are. We pause to give voice because giving voice is our task and giving voice bears witness to the love that we share. I also pause to now transition and give voice to the words that come to us from today's gospel lesson. Let us now turn our attention to the scripture lesson. Hear now these words from the Gospel of John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews, Jewish folks, gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in God's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What God has given me is greater than all these. No one can snatch it out of God's hands. The Lord God Almighty and I are one. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, what exactly does this word mean? By any chance, are you wondering that? How do we make sense out of this? Sure, perhaps there are some immediate connections that I think might call us into relationship, and yet I think we're invited to learn on this day, to sit on this day, and the fact that just like Easter, there are some tensions that will always remain. 
I'm not here to try to use long words or crafty phrases or slick slogans to trick you into something or to argue with you in such a way that I argue you into faith. Even Jesus couldn't do that from today's scripture. Can, you, can I get a witness, somebody? I mean, really, read it for yourself. Even Jesus couldn't do that. Instead, I'm here to speak about some realities we all know. Sometimes, God doesn't always give us the answer we want. Can I get a witness? Similarly, Jesus didn't tell the gathered crowds what they wanted to hear, at least how they wanted to hear it. You know, I can imagine the folks saying, Jesus, I mean, Jesus, just give it to me straight, no chaser. Tell me plain and simple. Tell me like a T.I. is. But Jesus told them, I've already told you. I have told you and you didn't believe, verse 25 says. I can imagine the crowd getting even more frustrated. What does that mean? What does that mean? Jesus, what have you been saying? Jesus, what have you not been saying? Jesus, what am I invited to learn in this moment? Jesus, are you the one whom you claim to be? Jesus, are you the one who's coming in the name of the Lord? Are you the Messiah? There were many questions for Jesus. And it turns out that what Jesus had to say would become a source of frustration for some. How many times in this walk through our lives do we find ourselves experiencing moments of uncertainty, of frustration, times when things don't seem to go the way we might envision them to go, times when the conversations don't quite pan out the way we imagined they would. Those who were listening to Jesus, well, they were listening for particular buzzwords. They were expecting a certain type of answer. And let me pause and say this. Sometimes the answer to your prayer isn't the answer you are always listening for. Who am I talking to on this day? Who am I talking to on this day? Sometimes the answer to your prayers doesn't sound like what you want to hear. Here's my point as we move forward. To understand what Jesus was saying, the followers had to let go of what they wanted to hear. And the same is true for you and me too. In order to hear what the Spirit is saying, in order to be led where the Spirit is leading, we must let go of what we're listening for and instead listen for and look at what God is saying. Because actions speak louder than words. Hello, somebody. They were trying to grill Jesus, and he said, stop listening for what you want to hear. And instead, look. Look at me. Look at what I've been doing. Look at where I've been. Look at where I am. Look at me. Look at the people I've served. Look at the lives that are changed. Look at the eyes that have been opened. Look at the lives that have been transformed. Look at the ways in which I have been a source of new life. Look at the ways that I have been the one who is seeking to create space for new life. Look at what I'm doing. I can imagine Jesus asking the people, why y'all so uptight? I mean, what's really going on here? What can't you hear? Why can't you hear what I'm saying? Why are you coming at me this way? Is it something that I've said or left unsaid? Well, what we discover from this text is that Jesus wasn't talking the right talking points. Jesus wasn't going along to get along. Jesus was doing what Jesus does, living a life that leads to new life. And new life always has a way 
of throwing off the balance for the world that is. The question for us is, will we live our lives in such a way that we are active participants in the new life God is seeking to birth in the world through the witness of Christ Jesus? For even if he was saying the right things, I wonder if folks would have been able to hear him anyway, really. Let's be real. I say that to say this. It doesn't matter what you say if folks are listening for what they want to hear. Do you hear that? Do you catch that? If folks are listening for one thing, that's all they're going to hear. You and I, we are called to go with God by following God. A God who indeed is at work in the world. A God who is on the move. A God who would not think too highly of God's own self and do something many wouldn't even dream doing. God got humble. Did you catch that? God got humble. Showed up in a little life inside a stable outside of a town while the government was busy trying to check the immigration status of his parents. You know, to figure out if they were legal. Mm -hmm. Follow. To follow in this way. Jesus is making the point. You are so busy looking for and listening for this way. You're so busy trying to find out if I'm the Messiah that you are unable to recognize all of the ways in which I am calling out, all of the ways in which I am being all of the ways in which I am exhorting those to experience the gift of new life, kind of like what the psalmist is talking about today for today's lectionary reading. The psalmist, Psalm 23, these words that so many of us might know so well, this imagery of a good shepherd, the one who indeed moves in such a way that the sheep can find rest, the sheep can find joy. The sheep can find peace. They know the voice of the one who is the good shepherd. They know the inflections that indeed are life-giving inflections. They are the ones who are experiencing the hope. They can never be snatched away. Why? Because they know who they're following. Do you know who you're following? Are you following in the way of the Lord God Almighty? Are you trusting in the grace of the Lord God Almighty? Are you positioning your life in such a way that you indeed are able and willing to be in the places where God seeks to show up? For there are so many places where God needs to show up and God seeks to show up where God can only show up if you do. There are some places God can only show up if you do. You know, the nursing homes, the hospitals, the jails, protest lines. We, we are called to be those voices for the voiceless, to be a friend for the friendless, to be an advocate for those in trouble. What I'm asking you is simply this. Are you willing to follow Jesus? Are you willing to go under the highways and meet God? Are you willing to work in such a way that God gets a good name? Are you willing to work so that you can look your enemies in their eyes and have compassion? Are you willing to struggle for the sake of Christ Jesus? Are you willing to struggle to learn how to be a better advocate? Are you willing to give up your fear in exchange for a deeper faith? Will you welcome those whom others tell you to exclude, even those whom some would say, well, I'm only excluding them because my faith says so, mm-hmm. If you do so, if you follow in this way, if you announce the reign of this one, I assure you that Christ will meet you right there because that's how God rolls. Always has, always will. God shows up in the ways that don't seem kingly, godly, dignified. God shows up in the ways, the people, the experiences, the situations we least expect. God is known to show up in a burning bush. God is known to speak through a donkey. God is known to show up and be a witness 
through a whirlwind. God can show up any way God seeks to show up. God is even the shepherd calling, the good shepherd calling. The shepherd who causes us to never want. The one who makes us lie down in green pastures, the psalmist says in 23. Leads us beside the quiet waters. God is the one who is a soul restorer. God is the one who leads us along a circuitous path for God's own namesake, such that even though we might walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, that we ought not fear no evil. Why? Because we're not walking by ourselves. God, come on somebody, God, whoo, call God is the one who is with us. God's rod and staff, they comfort us. God prepares a table, a spread before us, even in the presence of those who would be enemies, anoints us, our head, so that our cups are satisfied. Surely, goodness and mercy shall be known. They shall be witnesses. They shall follow us all of the days of our lives. And if that's the case, where could we possibly dwell but in the house of the Lord? I pray that just as those who have gone on before, just as those who have been witnesses to the way of Christ before, that you too might seek in this moment to live a life that is less focused on talking a good talk, and instead is all about walking a good walk. Can I get a witness, somebody? That's the point today. Can't argue you into a place of belief. It never works. Even Jesus couldn't do it. Read today's scripture lesson. That's not the point. The challenge for us is to live lives of love and compassion and justice and joy such that in everything that we do, if we never say what we believe with our lips, that our lives would proclaim with joy that which we profess. I pray that you might move both from this time of worship, but even within this time of worship, into a deeper place of trusting that you can hear the voice of God and that voice can compel you in ways that liberate you and those around you to new life. Not because I said it, but because of the love of God coming among us, being whispered to us through the lives and the actions around us. In the name and way and witness of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God and amen. Would you pray with me now? God, we thank you for all of the ways that you indeed move among us. We thank you, O oh God, that when questions are raised about who you are, that your response is one that invites us back into a place where we can look out for and observe your works in the world. We thank you, O oh God, that you are the one whom we can look for a track record. You're the one in whom we can trust because you've got a track record, of trustworthiness. We pray that you might grant us the courage and the capacity to, like you, be those who live lives that bear witness to our lip service. Go with us, go before us. Grant us your presence in the name of Christ, the one for whose voice we are listening on this day. Amen.
Join us now for Holy Communion. Go and gather elements that are both edible and drinkable. Come back, join us as we recommit our lives to the way of this great one, Christ Jesus of Nazareth. For we remember on this day that it was on the night that Jesus gave himself up for us. Gathered in an upper room with his disciples, he took bread, gave thanks to God for that bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat this bread. My body will be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup. After giving thanks to God, he took that cup, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. I'm creating a new covenant with you right now with this very cup. As often as you drink of it, would you remember me? And so in remembrance of these small yet mighty acts of God through Jesus Christ, we are invited to offer ourselves, our lives, as both a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Would you repeat after me? Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I pray that the Spirit of God might be poured out on you and on the gifts that you are bringing. May they be for you the very body and life source of Christ that you might be that for the world. By your Spirit, O oh Lord, make us one with you, one with Christ, one with each other, one in service, mission, ministry to all the world until Christ Jesus comes anew and we feast at that great banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, the gift of the church, we remember on this day, that all glory, all honor, and all praise belong to the Lord God Almighty. Thanks be to God, and amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, I invite you to pray in your first language the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. What I absolutely love about the gift of sharing in communion is that we are invited to remember one simple truth and it's that only bread that is broken can be shared and the cup is a sharing in the life source of Christ let us now prepare to receive these elements the body of Christ take this symbol and be that for the world take and give thanks with a grateful heart the cup of the new covenant. Take, drink, and give thanks with a grateful heart. Would you join me now in prayer? Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself for us. Grant that we might go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves in service to others in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Here we are at both the end and the beginning. I want to send you from this time and worship with God's blessings. Go, knowing that God goes before you always to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, below you to lift you up, and inside of you, that wherever you are in the world, you might be one who bears witness to the love of God, to the life God offers in this world, to the way of God embodied through Christ Jesus our Lord. Go in faith, hope, and that love. Amen. As you go, tell the world, as you go, Tell the world, tell the world about Jesus, tell him about his love. Tell the world about Jesus, tell him about his love as you
you go, tell the world. As you go, tell the world. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell him about his love. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell him about his love. As you go, tell the world.